It might seem that humanity has thoroughly studied the solar system, with planets long identified, rovers traversing Mars, and comets and asteroids nearly catalogued. Yet scientists were left baffled by a startling discovery. Our entire solar system, including the distant Oort cloud located a light year away from the sun, is enveloped in a colossal bubble. Yes, you heard that right. This finding was made by the James Webb Telescope, and famous physicist Brian Cox has confirmed it. But why the Big Bang is the way that it is? It's got some very special features, the Big Bang, which we can talk about. But inflation is the idea that space, space-time, was around before the Big Bang, and it was expanding extremely fast. And it was doubling in size in the most popular of these theories every 10 to the minus 37 seconds, which is point naught, 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 with 37 noughts, one of a second. So it's an unimaginably fast expansion. And then the idea is that draws to a close, so it quite naturally sort of dies away and the expansion slows down. And all the energy that was taken, that was causing that expansion, expansions sort of gets dumped into space and heats it up and makes particles and that's what we call the Big Bang. And those theories, the slight extension to those, um, say that, that that slowing down just happens in little patches. So most of the universe, the overwhelming majority of the universe is still inflating at that insane sort of speed and the just little patches stop and they're Big Bangs. So you get multiple universes, a multiverse. It's called the inflationary multiverse and we are in one of those bubbles and that's one of the more popular theories. This bubble spans a diameter of a thousand light years, with our sun positioned near its center. The revelation prompts questions. Are we truly living within an immense bubble? And how does this bubble impact the functionality of our solar system? Let's find out. So we see objects that sent their light to us basically 14 billion years ago. How about objects farther away than that? There are surely objects farther away. But the yeah. universe is old and isn't old enough yet for its light to reach us. Whoa. So it's possible that things are far, far more distant. We could be living light. in an infinite universe, but all we have access to is our little bubble. Mm. And so every year goes by. We got a little more data. The bubble gets one light year larger. Oh, wow. And we see a little bit more of whatever universe is out there. In 1977, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were launched from Cape Canaveral, with Voyager 2 actually launching earlier, less than a month apart. However, due to its different flight path, Voyager 2 reached the edge of the solar system second, six years after its counterpart. Both spacecraft encountered a peculiar anomaly. As they ventured farther from the sun, the density of space increased. While interstellar space is commonly thought of as a vacuum, this is not entirely accurate. Although the density of matter is exceedingly low, it still exists. Within the solar system, the solar wind maintains an average density of protons and electrons ranging from 3 to 10 particles per cubic centimeter, decreasing further from the sun. At the outer reaches of the solar system lies the heliopause, where the density of space is at its minimum. At this boundary, the speed of the solar wind, composed of charged particles emitted by the sun, or solar plasma, dwindles to zero. The region between the sun and the heliopause is known as the heliosphere, a sort of bubble encompassing all the planets of the solar system. At the heliopause boundary, the density of protons and electrons measures at 0.002 particles per cubic centimeter. Calculations suggest that beyond the heliopause in interstellar space, the particle density should be 0 0.037 particles per cubic centimeter. Voyager 2's instruments confirmed this calculation, detecting a density of 0 0.039 particles per cubic centimeter at a distance of 119.7 astronomical units, or 17.9 billion kilometers from the Sun. This alignment with calculations was intriguing. However, things took a strange turn. At a distance of 124.2 astronomical units, or 18.5 billion kilometers, the density spiked to 0.12 particles per cubic centimeter. Why this sudden increase in density? We'll delve into this shortly. But first, let's discuss another bubble, much larger than the heliosphere, to appreciate the complexity of the cosmos, which has enveloped us in two bubbles simultaneously, and to understand their interconnectedness. When examining images of deep space, one might assume it's filled with clouds of interstellar dust and luminous gas, However, in the 1970s and 1980s, astronomers began noticing a discrepancy. The space around the sun appeared vastly different. 
Rather than a dense expanse, the solar system seemed to exist in a near-empty void. In 2023, researchers at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics confirmed this observation. Through computer simulations, they constructed a three-dimensional representation of space and time. The findings revealed that the Sun and Earth reside near the center of a massive bubble spanning 1,000 light-years in diameter, aptly named the local bubble. According to calculations, it began forming approximately 14 million years ago, a process requiring around 15 supernovae explosions over several million years. These explosions propelled interstellar gas outward with the pressure of light, resulting in a bubble-like structure with a dense boundary surface. The bubble continues to expand in size, initially expanding at a rate of about 60 miles per second, as recorded by the European Space Agency's Gaia Space Observatory. It still expands, but at a slower pace of about 4 miles per second. On its surface, scientists have identified seven star formation regions, dense molecular clouds where stars are born. The process of star formation occurs across the expanse of the local bubble, and numerous such bubbles exist within the galaxy. Hence, it's conceivable that there are other stars, possibly accompanied by planets, situated within their own local bubbles, akin to our own. Interestingly, the Sun did not occupy a central position in our universe initially. During catastrophic explosions, the Sun was distant from the scene, approximately a thousand light years away. However, as Joao Alves, an astrophysicist at the University of Vienna, elucidated, roughly five million years ago, as the Sun orbited the galactic center, it nearly aligned with the center of its bubble. This alignment coincides with estimations derived from deposits of radioactive iron isotopes originating from a supernova, as observed in Earth's crust in other studies. The findings suggest the likelihood of additional star formation bubbles existing within the Milky Way. Research author and astronomer Alyssa Goodman from the CFA, who founded GLU, explains that statistically, the Sun wouldn't be positioned near the center of a large bubble if these bubbles weren't scattered throughout space. The local bubble is precisely where we are currently situated, she remarked. We believe the Sun has traversed numerous superbubbles throughout its history. The scientists analogized the cosmos to Swiss cheese. Supernova explosions punch holes in the cosmos, and new stars emerge on the periphery of these voids formed by dying stars. The research team intends to map additional cosmic bubbles to create a comprehensive 3D depiction of their shape, position, and size. By mapping the locations of bubbles throughout the vast expanse of space, astronomers can gain insights into how these bubbles serve as stellar nurseries, their interactions with one another, and the role in the evolutionary history of galaxies like the Milky Way. The opening of the local bubble offers a glimpse into the structure of our solar system. At its core lies the Sun, orbited by eight planets. Neptune, the outermost planet, resides approximately 4.45 billion kilometers, or 30 astronomical units away from the Sun, which is 30 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Beyond Neptune lies the Kuiper Belt, home to a collection of small celestial bodies, including Pluto, once considered a planet. Extending to approximately 55 astronomical units, the Kuiper Belt marks a significant region in the outskirts of our solar system. Further out, at a distance of 125 to 135 astronomical units, lies the heliopause, where the density of particles begins to increase. This phenomenon occurs due to the collision between solar plasma and interstellar plasma, akin to two cosmic streams colliding at incredible speeds. Certainly, as the collision occurs, the density inevitably rises. It's akin to a traffic jam, a chaotic assembly of particles. Beyond this congestion, Spanning a distance of 0.75 to 1.5 light-years lies the Oort cloud, a spherical accumulation of icy objects, potentially numbering up to a trillion, serving as a reservoir for long-period comets. Although the interstellar wind holds sway here, the Sun still retains these bodies within its gravitational grasp with its waning strength. Many of our viewers may wonder, we exist within a vast bubble, by earthly standards, and even within a double bubble, the local and heliosphere. So what? How does this impact our daily lives? Regarding the smaller bubble, the heliosphere, we can assert unequivocally that it serves as a crucial shield, safeguarding Earth from high-energy cosmic particles streaming from the galaxy's core, thanks to the congestion that forms at its boundary. Now on to the local bubble. Scientists have determined that our galaxy, the Milky Way, has the form of a spiral disk. Multiple spirals extend from its center, 
known as arms by astronomers. Currently, our sun sits nearly halfway between the Sagittarius arm and the Perseus arm. Our sun orbits around the galaxy center, completing one revolution every 200 million years. This period is often referred to as a galactic year. Since the appearance of humans, only a minuscule fraction, 0 .0008 of this galactic year has elapsed. Along its journey, the Sun and its planets have traversed not only bubbles, but also concentrations of interstellar gas, where the density of matter in space surged hundreds of times over. Astrophysicist Miroslav Flipovic, utilizing the latest Milky Way model, examined Earth's history as the Sun traversed the galactic arms, where interstellar space density is notably higher. A correlation has been identified between the Sun's passage through the spiral arms and five documented mass extinction events, occurring 415, 322, 300, 145, and 33 million years ago. Thus, it's plausible to suggest that the Sun currently resides in a tranquil haven, conducive to supporting life. One might speculate that humanity's emergence on Earth coincided with the Sun's entry into the local bubble, a fortunate occurrence. Could these two events, humanity's arrival and the Sun's safe haven, be connected in some way? Science currently lacks definitive answers. Nonetheless, it's undeniable that the vibrant sky we behold is largely due to our location within the local bubble, a relatively empty expanse. If the space surrounding us were denser, many stars would remain unseen. It's uncertain if our understanding of space and the structure of the universe would be as advanced if we were shrouded in darkness. We could consider the local bubble as a boon to humanity, especially as we venture into the space age and aim to explore the stars. For an interstellar craft traveling at sublight speeds, the primary concern is dust particles, which could pulverize the ship upon impact. Theoretical designs for such vessels often include frontal shields. Interestingly, it seems the cosmos has provided a solution by clearing the dust near the sun, encouraging us to forge ahead with exploration. Now let's shift our focus to another beautiful concept, the warp bubble. This topic is quite complex and usually requires advanced math skills to fully grasp, but we can offer a simplified explanation. A warp bubble is a region of space that contracts in the front and expands in the back. Theoretical models suggest that this expansion and contraction could propel the bubble and its contents forward at speeds surpassing that of light, all while adhering to the laws of physics. When traveling within a warp bubble, you're not technically surpassing the speed of light. Instead, you're moving within a compressed space bubble. The excitement surrounding warp bubbles stems from their potential to address a significant challenge of faster-than-light travel, time dilation. Here's how it works. Imagine you somehow manage to travel faster than light. As a result, everything outside your spacecraft would speed up, potentially causing what feels like a three-hour journey to a beautiful tropical planet to translate into years passing on Earth. Simply put, if you want to travel faster than light within the confines of known physics, you might have to bid farewell to your loved ones before embarking on your journey. However, warp bubbles sidestep this issue by keeping the space inside the bubble unaffected. As a result, an hour of travel within a warp bubble would only equate to an hour passing for those outside the bubble. This aspect of warp travel would resonate with fans of the Star Trek series, where warp travel is a central concept explored in various television series and films since its inception in 1966. Characters in these stories traverse the cosmos using swift spaceships and encounter diverse alien species. The torsion engine is the key here, as everything depends on it. In a vast and peculiar universe, especially when contemplating journeys to the next star, such technology becomes essential. The vast distances in space present nearly insurmountable challenges. Let's take the example of Proxima Centauri, the nearest star, located 4.5 light-years away. This immense distance means that even traveling at the speed of light, it would take 4.5 years to reach the star. Light, traveling at the fastest speed in the cosmos, serves as a universal speed limit, rendering other methods significantly slower. Utilizing the fastest space probe, the Parker Solar Probe, the journey through interstellar space would still require nearly 8,000 years. Hence, it's more practical to remain within the vicinity of Earth and its immediate surroundings. However, in the realm of fiction, the Star Trek crew ventured far from Earth, thanks to a solution they discovered. This solution involves long-distance travel by reducing the distance using the torsion engine's warp drive, providing captivating entertainment. Until the end of the last century, warp drive was considered purely fictional until a scientist recognized its potential. 
So what are the implications of warp bubbles in reality? Let's consider our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, located approximately 4.25 light years away, equivalent to about 25 trillion miles or 40 trillion kilometers. Currently, the fastest spacecraft, the Parker Solar Probe, travels at speeds of 450,000 miles per hour. While this is incredibly fast, it would still take around 63 years to reach Proxima Centauri at that pace. However, with warp bubbles, theoretically, one could traverse to Alpha Centauri in a month, as perceived by the spacecraft's occupants and mission control. Riding within a warp bubble creates a sensation akin to a floor materializing behind you and vanishing ahead, propelling you forward. Initially confined to the realm of science fiction, warp bubbles became a topic of serious consideration after theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre introduced his warp drive concept in 1994. This concept, which preserves Einstein's general relativity while facilitating faster-than-light travel, was a groundbreaking revelation. Inspired by an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, while studying Einstein's general theory of relativity in 1994, Alcubierre's calculations led to the publication of an article in Science Magazine that same year. Alcubierre's paper details a method to compress space and time ahead of the spacecraft while expanding it behind, forming a torsion bubble. This concept enables traveling a shorter distance to the destination within the bubble, often likened to a surfer riding a wave as a metaphor for star travel. However, a significant obstacle presents itself with Alcubierre's warp bubble. The construction of a warp engine proves challenging in reality, as it's impossible to forcefully curve space with regular mass. Exotic matter possessing negative gravity becomes necessary for this purpose. Alcubierre's warp drive entails creating a bubble of flat space-time around the spaceship and bending space-time around it to reduce distances. This requires either negative mass or negative energy density, with the latter appearing more feasible. Since negative mass remains unobserved, negative energy emerges as a sole viable option. Generating negative energy entails using a substantial mass to create an imbalance between particles and antiparticles. For example, if an electron and anti-electron manifest near the warp drive, one particle becomes trapped, resulting in an imbalance and negative energy density. In Alcubierre's warp drive concept, negative energy is utilized to create the space-time bubble. However, generating sufficient negative energy for a warp drive necessitates a considerable amount of matter. Alcubierre's calculations suggest that a warp drive with a 100-meter bubble would require the mass of the entire visible universe, rendering it impractical. Nevertheless, physicist Chris Vandenbroek proposed in 1999 that expanding the bubble's volume while maintaining a constant surface area could reduce the energy requirements to approximately the mass of the sun. While this represents a significant reduction, acquiring the mass of the sun for a single trip remains a formidable challenge. Numerous publications on warp engines have emerged over the years, but they've largely remained theoretical explorations of the theory of relativity for insights. The necessity for exotic matter has persisted. However, a shift occurred when physicist Eric Lentz delved into researching the concept. Lentz's fascination with warp drives began as a child, sparked by watching Star Trek. Introduced to Alcubierre's work as a teenager, Lentz continued his exploration of warp drive publications as he pursued his career in physics. And during the COVID lockdown, he rediscovered his old passions. It was during this time that he stumbled upon something overlooked in an article. Alcubierre had delved into the simplest solutions to relativity's equations, giving rise to the Alcubierre engine, an idea centered around a warp bubble propelled by negative gravity. Inspired, Lentz embarked on a journey into unconventional mathematics and unearthed practical solutions. Lentz's torsion bubble concentrated mass where curvature was highest, and remarkably, it could be constructed using everyday materials. Lentz was astonished that this approach hadn't been attempted earlier. Compared to Alcubierre's concept, Lentz's engine proved more feasible, albeit still requiring a significant mass input. However, the required mass was within manageable limits. The notion of warp bubbles, once deemed implausible, suddenly seemed more attainable. Despite the continued need for a substantial mass, the discovery of Lentz's engine reignited interest in warp bubbles and held promise for a potential breakthrough. White was familiar with Alcubierre's scientifically sound idea for a warp drive capable of surpassing the speed of light without violating the laws of physics. 
He understood the criticism aimed at the proposal due to its reliance on theoretical materials and vast amounts of energy seemingly unattainable in practice. While stationed at NASA's Eagle Works Laboratory, White, specializing in warp drive technology, reworked Alcubierre's original concept into a more feasible form. This simplified design significantly reduced the need for exotic materials and energy, offering researchers and science fiction enthusiasts a glimpse of hope for the eventual realization of a genuine warp drive. This adaptation led to the informal renaming of the original idea as the Alcubierre White Warp Drive. During his research funded by DARPA on Casimir cavities, White unexpectedly made a discovery that aligned with a the theoretical concept he frequently discussed. Previously, Casimir cavities and quantum scale forces were not associated with warp drive theory. White and his team at LSI were enthusiastic about this breakthrough, which DARPA recognized as having various potential applications. By chance, or perhaps by destiny, one of the few engineers capable of recognizing the connection between his research on Casimir cavities and his passion for warp drives found himself in the right place at the right time. White's team published the first peer-reviewed paper proposing a viable nanostructure for a warp bubble. This fortuitous discovery validated the predicted structure and energy characteristics of a warp bubble, offering a roadmap for future investigations. According to White, we propose a potential structure capable of generating the necessary energy distribution for an Alcubierre space warp. To advance their research, White's team put forward a design for a testable nanoscale warp drive craft. The initial experiment utilized a toy model consisting of a small sphere inside a cylinder, demonstrating energy density that matched the requirements of the warp metric. This analysis unveiled a three-dimensional energy density associated with the Alcubierre warp. White suggests that chip-scale experiments might detect subtle indications of the hypothesized phenomenon, a genuine warp bubble. As a devoted Star Trek fan, White advocates for utilizing this concept to produce energy density for a warp drive. While the nanoscale warp craft hasn't been constructed or tested yet, a nanoscribe GT3D printer could be employed for this purpose. The capability exists. What's lacking is the opportunity. White's team is presently concentrating on Casimir cavities, without any immediate plans for the warp craft. Despite the inability to construct the nanoscale warp craft, they proposed a linked experiment involving multiple Casimir-generated warp bubbles. This setup could enhance our comprehension of warp bubble physics and the potential for space travel. White is hesitant about developing nanoscale warp drive models. DARPA backs LSI Eagle Works for Casimir cavity research, not serendipitous warp bubble detection. Nonetheless, White foresees the design and testing of miniature warp craft, whether undertaken by himself or another researcher. He warns that developing a functional warp drive requires further scientific advancement. While it's not on the immediate horizon, there's optimism that humanity could one day traverse the cosmos using a warp bubble akin to Star Trek. White's exploration of Casimir cavities initially diverged from warp drive territory, but unexpectedly converged with his personal passion. The Casimir effect, a phenomenon in quantum physics, involves the attraction between two closely spaced uncharged conducive plates due to fluctuations in the quantum vacuum. Though seemingly unrelated, this effect held the potential for a breakthrough in warp drive technology. As White delved deeper into his Casimir cavity investigations, he discovered that his energy density distributions produced by these microscale structures shared remarkable similarities with the theoretical requirements of the Alcubierre warp drive. The discovery sparked excitement and a sense of coincidence as it connected two seemingly unrelated fields of study. However, White remained cautious. He understood that the journey from an unexpected finding to a functional warp drive was filled with challenges. Despite the intriguing nature of the Casimir effect, it posed its own complexities that required thorough comprehension. The idea of using this quantum phenomenon to create a warp bubble capable of manipulating space-time was enticing but it demanded meticulous scientific investigation. White's proposed blueprint for a nanoscale warp drive vessel represented a significant step towards practical experimentation. It proposed constructing a structure that, when manipulated precisely, could initiate and regulate a localized warp bubble. The implications were significant. A successful trial could mark the initial strides towards a real-world spacecraft capable of warp travel. This realm was unexplored, where the imaginative realms of science fiction intersected with the rigors of scientific inquiry. Despite the excitement, significant challenges persisted. 
meeting the energy requirements, manipulating quantum forces, and ensuring precise engineering all demanded concentrated effort. While White remained steadfast in his belief in the potential of a warp drive, he remained grounded in the realities of scientific advancement. The Casimir cavity experiment offered a promising path forward, yet it represented only one piece of a multifaceted puzzle. So thanks for watching this video. If you found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for more informative and interesting videos.